All right. We're greeting our uh, audience from the uh, entire Philippine archipelago and, of course, our foreign viewers because we have foreign viewers as well. Again, for our friends from the Visayas region, maayong hapon kanyong tanan. Uh, buenas tardes a todos in Zamboanga. Mayap agat panapun po for our friends in uh, Pampanga, our Ilocano-speaking areas. Na yung malam, kada kayo amin. Masantun nga rom. And for our foreign uh, audience, Bon pomeriggio a tutti, parla italiano. So again, we're happy to have you with us. We hope that you enjoyed your lunch wherever you are, whether you're working from home or you're watching us in your office. Again, thank you so much. 
again, we would like to take this opportunity also to thank all our audience and supporters who have been with us since day one up to this very day. Thank you so much for supporting our cause for quality tertiary education in the Philippines. Um, this morning, our CHED Central Office also conducted an online uh, virtual uh, seminar, a webinar also, and we would like to um, affirm the statement of our CHED Chair, Dr. J. Prospero E. Devera III, when he said that competition is now at the boo for our HEIs because the name of the game is collaboration, particularly in, the, in our case now in the, because of COVID-19. Collaboration is more important rather than competition. That is why for CHED Regional Office 1, we invited our different experts from uh, varied universities and colleges in the country and in the region to share their best practices for all of us to learn from them. Um, this morning, having heard from the best practices of Mariano Marcos State University and Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University on virtual learning environment and interconnecting campuses through open source technology, this afternoon we're very blessed to have an expert on languages and communication to share the experience of St. Louis University in Baguio when it comes to the use of Edmodo as a classroom strategy in the teaching learning experience of learners. So ladies and gentlemen, please uh, allow me now to introduce our next sharer this afternoon. Our Speaker this afternoon is a communications instructor in the School of Teacher Education, Languages, and Communication at St. Louis University. Prior to that, she taught cadets as a civilian instructor in the Department of Humanities at the Philippine Military Academy. She finished her master's degree in English from the University of the Cordilleras and with it, taught students from preschool to senior high school and adult IELTS learners as an IELTS instructor. She has also worked in the corporate world as an HR assistant at Camp John Hay Golf Club and a tech support agent for CITEL, formerly Client Logic. Today, aside from teaching, she takes projects as a freelance content writer and copy editor. She is passionate about the written word and considers herself a lifelong learner. Ladies and gentlemen, let us please welcome Ms. K. Lea Cacho Sichon. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, how are Hello. you? I'm sorry, yes, good afternoon po, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. I'm so um, excited and honored at the same time po. All right. How's the weather there in Baguio, ma'am? Oh, now it's uh, foggy and it just uh, had, we had medyo umambun po konti, sir. It's uh, drizzling and uh, I'm just so happy because I was telling the other uh, colleagues po in sa team sa CHED Region 1 na our power just got up kasi we had an outage from 8 to 12 and 12 p.m. and now we're here so I'm just happy that uh, we made it on time. Yes, and we're, we're very happy to, Mom, to have you with us. So, Mom, we'll give you the floor now. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, good morning to everyone, fellow teachers and colleagues. Uh, today, it's uh, really exciting. I'm really very excited to share something that I know will help us in our teaching and make our lives better, so to speak. And I think um, this tool that we will be focusing on, Edmodo, is uh, going to be helpful in both our teaching practices and as well as how we can get interaction and communication and collaboration with our students and fellow colleagues and teachers. So again, I'm very excited to have this time with you. It's great to be here, uh, thanks to technology. And what I'd like to share is uh, what my experiences so far our experiences in the uh, teaching community on how we use Edmodo for both online learning and teaching. Now, this tool is a very good tool. It has a, it's good dynamic. It's good for the class dynamic because um, it's very interactive. It's very user-friendly. And I hope that as I share today, uh, you'll be able to get the full experience and uh, as I walk you through. Uh, just some uh, little um, something I remember about Edmodo. I first used it when I was studying at grad school. 
and our professors would uh, use this for us to fulfill tasks. And you know how grad school is, you know, you really need uh, time to do it and guidance and resources are always an important thing. So right there and then, seeing that Edmodo is efficient and you have everything in one place, for me was already a winner. So when uh, I started teaching in high school, especially high school students, you know, they really love Facebook and their social media accounts and, and the platforms. I felt that Edmodo is a, a very good tool for, for them. So to start, um, I would like to share an Edmodo classroom that I set up for this webinar. Uh, if you have Edmodo on your mobile units already, or if you're on your computers right now, just go ahead and uh, click this link, type in this link here. It will lead you to the class I set up. It's called Writing for Social Media. It will be a link that will lead you straight to this class. Uh, if you don't have an account yet, what will happen is once you click this link, it will ask you to create an account. So just go ahead, type in your email. That's everything you need. That's all you need. And then uh, later, as we go through our short demonstration, the, towards the end, a demo, uh, it would be a very nice experience for us uh, as we go along this, this uh, sharing. But if you already have the Edmodo app, at the right side of the screen is the class code. It's RPC. 64w now what you do is uh, just click on join class it's supposed to be there in your interface later i'll show you where you can find it and then just type in the code and at the same time we will all be at one place okay so please though remember that this is not a requirement for the webinar i just want that to be clear for all of us this is an invitation for us to experience it firsthand. But let me stress, it's not in anything whatsoever is not a, it's not a required thing. It's not a required task for us today. All right, so let's get to it. This afternoon, we are going to focus on four things. We have a short um, discussion on how Edmodo can be used as part of teaching strategies. So, We'll have uh, the Edmodo classroom. We'll go through Edmodo's core features. And then uh, we'll be, I'll be sharing four reasons to like Edmodo. And towards the end, we'll do a short and simple demonstration demo on how to use uh, these functions, right? So basically, Edmodo is a uh, social learning network, right? And um, it's a discussion platform where students and teachers come together, whether real time or not, to have that conversation ongoing, that ongoing conversation in the classroom setup. So that means whatever it is that we are teaching, whether that be math, science, chemistry, uh, media, creative writing, whatever it is, Edmodo can be a very helpful tool. It is web-based, right? And it's available for students, teachers, and also parents and administrators. It's a free tool. And the only thing you need is an email address. You don't really need to go through difficult setup and installation processes. So that's one of the good things about this. Plus, it's a very nice interface. Let me show you quickly. This is my account. And basically, this is what you see. Once you have an account, you have this interface, everything in one place, and uh, we have home here, classes. We'll go through this, through this later. And um, the good thing about Edmodo too is I think the color scheme. You know, students would say that they really love how Edmodo looks like, because it's, it's simple, it's black and yellow. And uh, it's something very attractive and very light to see, very minimalist. But uh, moving on, um, once, as we say here in our slide, once educators and students are connected, that's where collaboration begins. I really love how this session was open today with stressing that collaboration is more important than competition. And uh, it is this exact same thing that we are stressing this afternoon. 
Okay, so um, as we mentioned, the Edmodo Classroom, when you use this tool, it's good for asynchronous communication as well as synchronous or face-to-face -face learning and face-to-face -face learning. It can be used as a tool alongside our classroom setup where we have we meet our classes every day. But in this case, given our situation with the COVID pandemic, uh, this would be a very helpful tool when you're talking about uh, asynchronous and synchronous learning. Now, I know there are many other tools out there. I, I know that this is one of your options. And I hope that as we go along, you'll be able to get some helpful tips and insights for you to use in your classroom. So um, the Edmodo Classroom, there are two things that I really want to share here and how we can see an Edmodo Classroom setup. So the first one is it's good for synchronous and asynchronous learning. So when we say synchronous learning, it's um, as defined, it's online or distance education that happens in real time. When we say real time, it's like what we're doing now. I'm here, you're at your end, we're all basically in one classroom at the same time listening to this same thing and that makes it synchronous, synchronized. Okay, the other opposite to that is asynchronous. It is where we begin to use online channels without real-time interaction. Now, how does this happen? Um, according to Stefan Hrastinsky, okay, asynchronous learning, you, know, you use learning platforms. This is one of them. Okay, you have a lot. You have uh, Google Classroom, you have Schoology, uh, Edmodo, many other tools right now. Even Microsoft have, uh, has their own learning tool right now. So basically, asynchronous learning will involve discussion boards. You also have uh, support relation relating to teachers and students alike, co-teachers and students. And as uh, opposite to synchronous e-learning, we usually use video conferencing for this and chatting. There was one time where I was um, I asked my classes to for a class discussion. It was uh, through a Facebook Messenger chat because I felt that I really needed to explain um, a research digest that they had to do. So I said, can we all be at one time in place, just be available from 2 o'clock? And it was just chatting. We were all just chatting. I was throwing questions. They were giving their insights. They had questions they'd ask me. So that would also be considered synchronous because everyone is doing the same thing or in that place at that same time and pre being present, all right? And synchronous e-learning is uh, good, especially with Edmodo, because it gives support so to, to students. So how does it work? So for example, for synchronous learning, um, I could first, as a teacher, create a five-minute video maybe on teaching about how to do feature writing. So I'd give the salient features, I'd give them uh, some examples, it gives guidance and uh, the elements are explained well. Then after that five minute video that I send or I, we're able to have in a synchronous environment, Edmodo now comes in by giving supplementary tasks, okay, which we will be showing in a while, right? Uh, video conferencing and I can either be done through either a Facebook video call right now. Uh, Facebook Messenger Rooms uh, has begun. It's already available in the Philippines. So that means you can create a Messenger chat room and then uh, more than uh, you can have more about up to 50 people in one video call for Facebook. Because in the Philippines, a lot of students have Facebook more than other platforms. So that would be one option. Others would use Zoom, Google Talk, and things like that. But that's the idea with uh, synchronous learning. Now, when it comes to asynchronous, um, sometimes, like what, what we've experienced so far, not all students have a good and stable internet connection. So Edmodo was very helpful because I would post something for them to do on a weekly basis. And since they all have the apps on their phones, they get notified announcements come up whenever they submit their work, I will know. Whenever I give a task, they would know. And with uh, data connectivity, it's possible for them to do 
their tasks at any time, at any place at all, right? So these are some examples of uh, the overview of how synchronous and asynchronous learning would work. So instead of a live video coverage for asynchronous learning, maybe I could record my five minute talk, right? A while ago in synchronous learning, uh, I'd like to stress that that's a live call, for example, a live call. But for asynchronous, it is something recorded and we can give that to our students. So those are two things about uh, what we can do as uh, with Edmodo in an Edmodo classroom. The other one is a flipped classroom. Uh, I must say, every, ever since I, I uh, heard about this learning concept, I felt I was so fascinated by it. So what is flipped learning? So here, I, I put a simple infographic. Uh, at the left side, before a flip philosophy, so to speak, students would read over the materials before class, then they come to class, listen to the lecture, and then do homework to apply what was discussed in class, right? Now, the flipped classroom is a, is a total opposite. What we do is we give students uh, interactive learning modules. It can be uh, something new to them. Like uh, if we're teaching feature writing, for example, we give them a sample, let them go over it so they have uh, prior knowledge. And then when they're in class, we apply concepts at once. Then after class, that's when we do more complex tasks. So here, learning is intensified. It's like learning started with themselves independently because of the tasks we give to, you know, start that introduction, get that firsthand experience. It's whether it's watching a video about, about it or letting them do um, an activity, read something, anything at all. So it's, that's why it's called the flipped scenario. So here, according to Teach Thought, blended learning is where, uh, I mean, the flipped classroom is blended learning approach, where you're mixing face-to-face -face interaction with independent study using technology. And Edmodo comes in into that story when you're talking about uh, technology. So as I mentioned, similar to asynchronous learning, students might watch a pre-recorded video at home then go to school, do the homework, and then learning then in the classroom is now focused on the conversation between teachers and students. Okay, what didn't you understand? Uh, what are things you still want to know about? Then because they already have prior knowledge, you're using the discussion in the classroom to just enhance what they've known, they've already come to know, and then add more insights and then take it to a whole new level. So that is the, the flip classroom. So these are some scenarios uh, that when we talk about the Edmodo classroom, is something that we can really do as teachers in whatever level from preschool until adult learners. This is something that we can definitely do. Uh, one thing though that really reminded me of uh, what we're doing right now is this. Ken Robinson said, we're talking about uh, technology and the different types of learning but we have to remember and I so agree with what he was saying that teaching is a creative profession it's not just a delivery system great teachers pass on information but what great teachers do also are they mentor stimulate provoke and engage so as we go on with this uh, learning today I hope that it would give us what we need or additional knowledge on how we could further engage, provoke, stimulate, and mentor our students uh, to, to embrace their full potential. All right. So now I'd like to introduce Edmodo's core features. Now here in each icon, uh, we feature a specific tool that Edmodo has for us. One is the communication stream. Okay, when we say communication stream, uh, it's basically here, this one, this whole thing that we see when we log in. This is the communication stream. Now you could filter this. This one, these articles, much like Facebook, if you subscribe to pages or to people, you'll get material out of it. But if you want to filter, that would just be for class activity. This is uh, 
all the posts I did in relation to my classes. So here at the left side, you have all your classes. You have uh, menu items here. We'll go through that one by one. You have notifications. And that's the communication stream. We could also include communication stream with the messaging, the messaging function of Edmodo. Okay. Next is you have teacher libraries. Teacher libraries are found in this part up here, the library, right? Uh, this is an example of that. This is my own library. So you could link your OneDrive if you have one. Uh, Google Drive is linked to some of my classes. And uh, later, we'll see this in action. Now, for students, they have student backpacks. Whatever materials we give them as teachers, it automatically gets saved in their backpacks. So even if you've been teaching, even if you've sent it like two months ago, it's, it's there in their accounts. You also have a planner quickly. Um, the planner is at this icon is found here, this side. If you click on this, let's see while that's coming out. Okay, we'll see that later. Uh, you also have badges and gradebook, assignments, polls, quizzes, groups. You can create groups for your classes, and you have a profile page as teachers. Now, um, one thing that's good about, uh, let's say, badges and gradebooks is this. Once a student passes their, turns in their assignment or their tasks, you can grade them from Edmodo. And these grades come out as a spreadsheet. And um, later, we're going to show that. For assignments, you can create assignments, schedule assignments, mention when it's due, even quizzes. If you're creating quizzes, you can set how much time they have to finish, what, how many minutes they should finish the task. Uh, you can have multiple choice, true or false, matching type. And, and those, those things that we need as teachers. And the good thing is if you create a quiz that's more objective in nature, once students answer that quiz, it checks, Edmodo checks it for you already because you, you already put the answers to that quiz, which is, of course, not accessible to your students, right? There. Now, let's go by, uh, let's, let's get to know these features a bit more as we talk about what are reasons to, to like Edmodo, okay? So in this section, there will be four things that I would like us to, to get into. One, it's uh, safe social learning. You also have accessibility and portability. It's uh, organized and efficient. And the, the word for us today, our word of the day, would be collaboration and that sense of community. Okay, so let's uh, get that. Let's get that started, shall we? So the first one you have uh, safe social learning. Now I got this information from Edmodo. Uh, Edmodo assures that when it comes to privacy, they really make sure and they had their students in mind for this. So the only thing people would need to create an account is an email address. Okay, to join a class, students will use a six digit unique code and that's it. The teacher generates this. Next thing is students cannot be friended or contacted by anyone outside the Edmodo group. So it's really the classroom all to yourself. The students, a virtual classroom at its purest sense. Okay. Other features would be students can post messages to their teachers, like on the wall or the uh, communication stream, sending us messages, but they cannot post to their own Edmodo group. They cannot also, uh, what do you call this? Cannot send private messages, I mean, sorry. I cannot send private messages to each other, but they can create messages for the whole group. So here, um, I don't know about you, but you know what? This is a very good way to teach digital citizenship. I don't know if you agree with me, because sometimes a lot of the young people, they use uh, their, their social media profiles to say, to say things. They use their messenger accounts to do things that or say things that kind of are not really 
nice, so to speak. I don't know, but maybe high school teachers could relate with me. So if you have a, a, a platform like this where students learn how to be responsible and know when and what they would like to say at a given context, I think that's a good thing on a side note. And uh, finally, when it comes to so safe social learning, teachers maintain full control of their Edmodo groups, right? We can delete posts, we can monitor activity, we can review student posts before they show up in uh, streams, and uh, we could individually message our students in, in groups and give them read-only access. Now, uh, I, I really love the feature of the messaging feature of Edmodo because when students have questions, they send me a message. And I think, especially now that we're not in the classroom physically with them in our classes, we need to exert more effort, you know, to have your presence felt as a teacher. And the messaging platform is a really a helpful tool because then they find it accessible. You, they can ask a question, you can give your answer, you can also ask them clarifications and the like. So it works both ways. So that's the first reason why Edmodo is a likable. It's because it's safe and uh, it's safe social learning. The second uh, reason to like Edmodo is, of course, its accessibility and portability. I mentioned earlier, it's very easy to use, right? And um, it's a downloadable app. Now, it's web-based. This would be how it looks like if you don't have an account yet. Uh, you can click on at the upper right, sign up, and you'll just go ahead and put your information. Or you can download the app on any mobile unit or your gadgets and uh, register with the email address, then you're good to go. There are three types of uh, user accounts. You have the teacher account, a student account, and the parent account, which is great. I have, uh, I think, in the classes I have, I have one class that I have, there are two parents signed in, our Edmodo class, okay? Now, these are just pretty much, it's a way for parents to to know what tasks are due and the like. Okay, so it's interesting because you know what? Um, learning, if there's one thing I, I appreciate from, from pre-elementary uh, teaching is preschool, so to speak, is the support of the home. And I believe that has to go on until they're in their higher ed uh, level. It's still important, like right now, we need to get the parents' support in all our teaching uh, endeavors, right? I, I think everyone would, I hope people are nodding this morning because we feel that we all need that community. So these are the three accounts that we can set up. And if you, for example, start creating, uh, what do you call this, your accounts? These are the things you will see. For the teacher accounts, you'll put in your email address, your password. You can also use your Google your Google links, your Google email address. For students, right there and then, they will be asked to write their full name. But you know what? Uh, based on experience, before you give the class codes to your students, it's good for, for you to mention, please write your real names, you know? Because <laughs> it's funny. When you start recording, uh, grading them, and then you, who is, who is this? person because it sounds like a superhero character and not a, a name so i'd have to say is this person the same as this person in edmodo so i'd really even have to ask them that then just just something to make your life easier let your students put their real names okay then the class code you're going to give this class code they can uh, create their username uh, as you meant here you have the email is optional and for parents, they can also create an account, but the same way, we give them a class code. So if you're a teacher, you're going to create a class. You can actually do that here. Drop down, create a class. Then you could just say, let's say, uh, English 101. And then 
uh, grammar for grades, for grade seven, for example. Oh, sorry. Grammar and composition, let's just do that. And then uh, you select a grade, maybe that seventh grade. You select a subject, language arts, then uh, English. And, uh, right. And then you can change the color. Then you create, right? So uh, once that happens, you already have your class. And now you can add students. If you have them, their email addresses and their names arranged in a Excel sheet this way, you could actually import that and it does the work for you. There are other ways to, to invite too, like here. Uh, you share the class code, you can share a PDF or invite by email. But I've been using this lately. I don't know what's wrong, but I think it's better to share a class code or this share link with students, which is why if you do that, like how I showed you a while ago, it leads to the interface where you have to log in and create all of those already. So if you have an Edmodo account and you click on that link, automatically this should happen. It opens to the class we just created, all right? So that's uh, just a brief thing for us to see here. Um, further, uh, I showed this a while ago. Yes, you share the code, the six digit code. And here, this is what the three accounts are seeing from their end. Now the teacher account, this is how we see it. Uh, live version is uh, here, class management. These are all the classes I've used Edmodo with so far. There, so you have those tucked in nicely. Now for a student's account, uh, to student account is what they see. Okay, they have their classes. If maybe they have more than one class using Edmodo, it will show up here. You also have what are upcoming tasks, this, the communication stream. And um, you also have here uh, the backpack that we were talking about. And you also have uh, this cover. We'll, we'll go over those in a while. Now for parents, this is how, this is what they see. Um, I included a, a guide here. Actually, in Edmodo, if you go to help.edmodo.com, it gives you so many um, helps, gives you canned notes on how to use a parent account. So the parent is more of like a, a spectator in the, in the classroom. The, the parents will know what tasks are up, what they should be doing, but they're really not... Um, communicating per se directly, okay, there. So that's just something that I'd like to show you because the parents can also be part of the Edmodo experience. Now, here, uh, with all of those things I've shown so far, we can see how Edmodo is uh, social learning at its in, in its purest sense, at its best, so to speak. And I'd like to say that because some, some of my colleagues and students would say it was easy to use Edmodo because Facebook was easy and if you know how to use facebook you know how to use edmodo so i'd like to call edmodo as facebook's nerdy cousin right because um edmodo is actually a learning platform but also it's not a boring platform it's it's a very engaging platform i had uh, students describe edmodo as being engaging just because of the color scheme Okay, you know, visual appeal is very important nowadays too. So now I'd like to go on with um, the third reason to like Edmodo, and that is because it's organized and efficient. Okay, I don't know if you know Mary Poppins, but for those of you who do, I think, uh, do you remember that song they would sing when they have to sit to clean up the kids' rooms and they just do everything in a snap? Uh, that would be great for us right now, right, as teachers. But similar to that, I think Edmodo for teachers is like the Mary Poppins that we need in our lives when it comes to having everything in its place. Okay, so you have the communication stream, the planner, assignments, polls quizzes, teacher library, 
uh, student backpack for students and the badges in gradebook. Now, um, here are the differences between what teachers and students can access or what they see at their end. Now, both teachers and students, they can see, comment on, react to the communication stream. For messaging, communications, teachers can communicate with students and the, the student can communicate with their instructor. Both will have their own planner. Teachers will have their teacher libraries, while students will have their student backpacks. Now, whatever it is that are in their backpacks will actually be coming from us as teachers. And then once they do their tasks, we have their grade book. We can award badges. Students receive badges. They get notifications when their work is graded. And if you give gave some feedback, like descriptive wise, what do you think about what they've written? They receive that too. Edmodo gives that option. Then for teachers, you can create polls, quizzes, and assignments. And at the same, at the other end, the students know what to do. And it's easy for them to turn in their work. Okay. So um, here is an example of the progress tracker. Now, where do you see this? This screenshot is taken from, from this. Upper right, you have classes, class management. This is it, seeing the classes that you created. What's due would be this, okay? Uh, you can even see what you've reviewed already. You can see uh, what needs to be created. All my classes, maybe you could choose one class, for example, this one from a few years back. And uh, progress. Now, this is where the work is done for us, right? Now, the class I created, uh, writing for social media. Oh, here. It's nice to see everyone. Um, a lot of you added yourselves. Great. So I accepted some of you here. So all of you are now in this class. This is nice to see. Hello. We have Angelico out there, Josephine, Miss Donna. It's nice to see you. So here, when we start putting in work later, everything will appear here. And for example, if uh, Fiona, for example, right fulfill the task we can award a badge like this add a badge uh, this one i created i said the same you can create your own badges too but for example if fiona is the student of the month then you can add that to her personal account like right click just so that you have a different open window uh if your students are the type of people who like building up on their profiles oh here you have this she's an instructor as well working at k -Lite. so she she fulfilled her her what do you call this her profile that deserves a badge right you can actually give a badge to to her so that badge could be profile or profile complete for example add badge to the group you can also do that on a personal level now i didn't want to show other things because this one i have right here in front of you is an actual class i have right now so we have final requirements week four and five once we finish grading this you will even know who has not yet turned in their work you can send a reminder this uh, part here would also already tell you how much percent uh, the percentages of their performance so far and then you can export this. Once you're done grading, you can export it to a Excel file. And that could be easier for us when it comes to fulfilling our class record. So what I did was, as I showed a while ago, you can add a badge, okay? And the class now has these badges because they completed certain things. This is for purposive Com. 7.30 and the like. Okay, so um, again, for those of you who are out there and would like to experience the Edmodo Classroom in this uh, webinar, then I encourage you, uh, download Edmodo. If you're a web-based, just click this link or type in this link. 
if you have the app type in your class code and we'll be at one place okay uh, shortly we'll be able to see how real edmodo can get okay now um one thing that i'd like to show right now is uh this edmodo 101 okay we're already going to start a little demonstration okay a while ago i showed you the communication stream right so here you can sort you can filter your posts by uh posts that you put yourself like for this these are my posts this was our post for the class we set up yesterday this is a post i did for uh, our km class these are their requirements you can see how things are attached there okay and for for other things here is the messages let me just show you this for a moment you can send a message here if you notice um students send in their work and you can see where it is right uh for classes like for example if i go to my communication stream right now and i can check this peer evaluations for example okay just one moment i just want us to see what we can Okay, one moment. Right. By me. Okay. So here. Um, this one. I can click on this to find out who have submitted already. Okay. There. Things like that. So here you can check not turned in, turned in. 49 students all in all then if you see that 19 students have not seen the assignment you can send them a reminder and it automatically goes to their inbox there so that's one thing i wanted to show and then for the teacher library if i click on this you have here um, submissions quizzes assignments uh, some pictures they sent and the like now i think we can now start creating posts. So for those of you who have uh, signed up for our class, then let's see this happen, right? So I'm going to our class right now, writing for social media. Sorry. So here, the first thing that I would like to do is to create the class folder. Now you do this, so the files that you would need your class to do, to have, would be in one place. Okay, so I'll add a folder. I could type in writing for social media. You can select higher education. You could go for professional development and then create, right? For example, if you want to modify that, you can actually just go ahead and change it. Now I will be adding files. So I created a, a file folder for this on my desktop. So let me just go ahead and upload this because we will be using it later on to create those classes or those tasks. So we have here all of these right so i have a rubric i have a handouts we have um, another rubric so if these are files that you intend to give to your students then it's already in place okay so now let's go back to our posts so the first thing that i'd like us to try here is um Let's first create a well-being post. It's one of my favorites. You can do a wellness check. Say, how are you feeling today? Okay, now I'm posting this right now. So for those of you who have your Edvodo accounts, you can go ahead and start voting in. Just click on it. I'm great. I'm okay. I'm meh. I'm struggling. Now, 
there's one thing that uh, I heard one of the Edmodo users say that Edmodo is a way to bring out, lure in the introverts. I like that because I know some of us in our class, we have uh, students who won't say a word, but when it comes to things like this, they'd interact. And I think it encourages that sense of community, okay? Now, now that we've tried doing that post, now let's do an announcement. So let's see, just please go ahead and type in or answer the poll if you want to. Now for this, let's say our topic is about feature writing. So it's our first day of class, for example, uh, the flip classroom style. So I'm going to type this in. I say, good morning, everyone. I hope the weekend went well for you. This week, we will be focusing on feature writing and how to do it right, okay? To begin, here are things we need to go through. So I could say, please watch the video. I, the video I attached to this post and about, about the feature story about what, sorry, about what a feature story is and then read on, read more on it through the handout, the attached handouts, the handouts, <laughs> editing myself out loud. Right, so um, you can even say, I look forward to your feedback your reactions to these materials so there and then we can go to the library you could search for that writing for social media then you could actually have um, feature article qualities of a feature story attach that and since i have a video link okay I can put that in here. Okay. And then we can post that. The, you can even schedule this, schedule your post. Maybe if you want this to show up tomorrow. No, let's do it maybe later for, for our purposes. You can have, it's already 149. So let's say two. 250 you can be as precise as you want 250 p.m and then there okay or you can post it right now so everyone who can see this there's two your students in their mobile units can see this they could actually just click on this and they can access that material you sent see this is what they will be seeing and they can watch that, learn about feature writing. And um, once that they once they did that, maybe you could Hello. Sorry about that. Our our oh, power. Sorry, yeah, back. I really apologize. Our power just got off. I'm now connected through a personal hotspot. So um, All right, we're having a little um, technical difficulty on the part of Miss Kay. Nonetheless, while she is uh, trying to fix the internet connection in uh, her uh, place, may we uh, again appreciate your questions. Please um, 
put your questions in the comment section so can, we can uh, see them. And uh, we can ask our questions to Ms. K uh, later on. I believe uh, majority, if not all of us, are interested in on how to use Edmodo in the classroom, uh, particularly on its features. Uh, I suppose parents are happy if uh, they can see how their children perform in academically using this technology. And at the same time, uh, it's nice also to uh, note that um, teachers would be able to uh, hone their technical skills and uh, their uh, potentials using technology using this uh, online platform for our students. And it's a good thing also, listening to Ms. Uh, K a while ago, that uh, using Edmodo is not only good for basic education uh, students, but also for tertiary education. Um, I, I was able to have a, an experience of using Edmodo, though not that quite long, but I can say that uh, aside from students enjoying it, teachers also uh, get to enjoy the process of doing the materials to communicating with students using this platform. All right, let us check if uh, Kay is uh, with Hi. us. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yes. Yes, Miss Kay. Uh, okay. Hi. Oh, my. I really am sorry. I'm right now connected to a personal hotspot, so I will be managing my time. And um, I can pick up from where we start, when we, where we ended, if, if that's all right. Let me just share my screen right now. All right. Hello. Yes, Hello. I hear you. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Let me let me go ahead and continue with this. Uh, again, I apologize. Okay. So uh, a while ago, I was showing you how to actually create assignment posts. Now, let me do one more thing for us today. You can now create, for example, an assignment. Here, you can create assignment, and then you could type in the details. For example, you could say a home classic uh, because it's feature writing, for example. Then you could put in your content. You could say write a feature article about your favorite dish at home, okay, for example. And um, you can now add a rubric, for example. So you can open the library, add the rubric. You have here feature article rubric. And then you could even go as far as mention what your format is right there double spaced century new gothic font 12 and then you go ahead and assign this and you select the due date so you could say may 29 for example what time maybe 6 6 40 no that's just that's funny turn 6 for 30 p.m then add the grade book. You can even have an option to lock after due date and then assign. So if those of you who have their apps up, you will no receive a notification at once and it will look like this. So as a teacher, you can check on submissions, right? So right now we have, how many students do we have here? I'm accepting you guys. So not turned in 93, we have 93 students. If you turn your work in, you'll be able to give feedback. Now, that's that's something that, that you can do. Like, for example, if a student turns in their work, for example, if Sir JR turns in their work, the attachment will show up here, right? And then you can add a comment and give your feedback in this box here. You can even attach other things from your library, a link, 
a file and you can create, for example, maybe 30 points and then the grade is 25. You can save that, for example. You can say, good job. I like how you talked about CSIG. Add comment. Then this shows up, it's graded. And your, you as a student will be able to see what you've written and will be able to get their grade. Okay, that's one thing. Now, another thing I'd like to show is this. Um, I hope that we can, we can see this happening. You can create a quiz. Okay. Now, this is a feature that I, uh, for example, the quiz is teacher writing. Uh, choose the best answer, the simplest thing. But you can, of course, be more specific with this. Right, and then you can create quiz questions. Now here, let me show you this. A drop down, you have true or false questions, multiple choice, short answer, fill in the blanks, matching, and you can even do a multiple answer, right? So for example, if I say, which one following is considered a feature story, you create this. There, and you could indicate that this is the correct answer so that when your students will actually answer it, right, their answers get checked at once. Okay, you have this and one more response. So this is an example of a multiple answer, multiple answer question. So you have, this is the correct answer and this. So the question is, which one of the following would not be considered and the like? So for example, you did that. Uh, let's just stick with one right now. It's saving and then assign. This is a quiz, so your due date may be, what, Thursday? Lock after the due date. And this is an awesome feature. You can just say, for example, 15 minutes. Um, you can even randomize the question. So once you assign that, the student, once he starts the quiz, he better finish in 15 minutes. <laughs> so that's an awesome feature. So um, this is something that uh, I'd like us to, to see. There is so much more that I would like to share. Um, but basically, that covers a lot of it. There are other things you could, uh, so we created an assignment, you created a quiz, you now know how the grade book works. Um, let's try one more thing. If you want to elevate your learning experience, you could create tasks, maybe a performance task. Uh, maybe this time, because feature writing, can be elevated to a food blog, right? They can create their food blog. Maybe you could say a food blog. Let me just show this to you guys. You want them to create, create a food blog of your of of a bestseller in your favorite restaurant. See? Now, the attachment that I'd like to put to this task is Erwan Yusuf. I don't know, maybe you know him, but he really does well with, with his food blogs. So this is his link. Why am I including this? Well, because um, it is a good way for students to know what a food vlog is, basically. Okay, and then we could actually go ahead and assign that. You can select the due date. Maybe a food vlog is harder to do. So you could say June 5, long after due date. You could go as far as 8 p.m. if that's all right. This is a college setting. You know, some students would even ask for a 10.30 evening deadline. Unbelievable. And uh, there. So you have that post up. 
Okay, and if you watch this video, you'll be able to see Erwan. But since I am on data, that is a bit slower. Okay, so that is the Edmodo classroom in a short demo of what you can do. There is so many things, there are so many things you can do with it. Now, this is an example of a poll by a colleague of ours. We have Dr. Tibaldo following up on tasks on a journalism students. So as you see here, students were responding as to how they're doing with their submissions. We have one post by one of our students. Incidentally, um, Kim and her group got their, their, their entry, or their documentary, City Painted Red, um, is featured in the Knowledge Channel. So she was inviting all her classmates, everyone in the Edmodo community of SLU or COM to actually take part and be part of it. So here we see, um, which is our last point today, that Edmodo is great for collaboration and community. Now, in your interface, you have features here of what do you call this hashtags. If you if you click on hashtags, it will bring you to so many discussions on language arts. So if you notice here, you also have popular conversations here. This is teachers interacting with teachers. You also have this option, discover, where you have collections on distance learning, you have student focused news. So there's a limitless resources within our reach. Okay. And um, as I this I showed you earlier. So I'm almost ending. Um, I really love collaboration. Robert Meehan said, the most valuable resources uh, that all educators have is each other. And I know we will agree with this. Without collaboration, our growth is limited to our own perspectives. You know, if we, we want to do better as teachers, we really need to reach out too. You're not alone in this, especially in this pandemic. Um, it's actually a challenge now teaching in a pandemic because our creativity is tested. And we need to come up with engaging creative activities for both ourselves and our students. And we're not physically with them. So giving extra effort to go further and make your presence felt in the classroom, in the virtual classroom, is more difficult than actually doing that in the face-to-face -face setup. So the, the thing is, if we weren't doing a good job communication, communicating with our students while in face-to-face -face communication or interaction, how much more on in virtual learning? Because uh, all of us who have been teaching, we know that to keep our, our, our students interested in learning, that takes a sort of a, a relationship between a teacher and a student in the classroom. Um, there is this thing called you're, you, you are relevant to, to their time and you get through them because they actually can feel that you are out there to your you're rooting for them, you, you're doing your best for them to reach their goals. That's why they're learning from you. So it's very important that we foster community and collaboration with both our students and co-teachers. It's pretty much like a, a long distance relationship, right? Uh, there's this distance, but you need effort. It takes a give and take to make things work, so to speak. And um, these are the things we covered today. And I'm glad to have shared this with you. And to end, this is something I'd like to say. Uh, technology cannot ever replace great teaching, but it can make great teachers even better, right? Uh, I attended a webinar by Sir Gerson Abesamis, and I like what he said on an asynchronous learning. He said, as a teacher, you're the designer right? You create rooms in the home that you're creating in your virtual classroom. And you're creating rooms where students can explore. Uh, they can, you know, navigate their way on their own. And they, even if you're not there physically, they have that sense. They, they have a sense of feeling. They, they know that it's you in that place with them, even if you're not physically there. 
So these learning activities should make them feel like they're not isolated at all. And that takes a lot of effort. If it means replying to their messages, replying to their emails, just to be to give them assurance that you're listening, then that's a great deal. Um, I think when it comes to creativity at these times, to pull off great teaching with technology, we should never forget, we should not undermine the teacher's personal touch. The learning that we create for our students is supposed to be an extension of who we are and what we're good at. So if you love writing, then you know work around that. If you love uh, physical activity, if you love, you're into technology and things like that, you can use that in your learning environment. And I got that from that webinar I, I, I listened to also. And Edmodo is merely a tool. So I hope that uh, this afternoon, that ends uh, what I have to share today. I hope all of you had a good time. I apologize for the power outage. This is unscheduled, but I'm thankful that we were able to finish and follow through with this. And I would like to turn over now to our, um, our host. Thank you, Ms. Kay. Um, please uh, stay with us for a while because we have our questions. Yes. And uh, okay. before we go to the open forum, again, I would like to say thank you for sharing your expertise. Not only your expertise, but your experience when it comes to using Edmodo in the classroom. Um, during your discussion, we were looking at the comments of our viewers and really you're able to rekindle the passion for teaching. Uh, of our audience, particularly those wow. who are uh, in the education sector. And uh, at the same time, as I was saying a while ago, um, I think parents are also happy to learn that uh, with the different online platforms, Edmodo can uh, be used to see how their children perform in their respective classes. And uh, that uh, Edmodo is not only for basic ed, I think tertiary education students can also avail of uh, this uh, gospel of technology <laughs> i agree gospel of technology indeed thank you ma'am um we're yes. now ready for the questions and uh we'll be okay. posing the first question is actually from mom remed Tejada, and she asks if a quiz is given is cheating be prevented to this platform can it be prevented using edmodo um cheating is a very I, cheating is a very complex thing um per se copying answers would actually be uh, what do you call this if if you were sitting beside your classmate doing the quiz together there's a lot of temptation there right so i think that um you can use i would say it's better to use edmodo quizzes when it comes to what you want your student what you want to the, the, the insights of your students. You can go with open-ended questions, uh, short answers, if cheating is a concern. But um, I think when it comes to giving quizzes, objective quizzes, the element that Edmodo has, which is to time the quiz, is a very good thing. Especially if you give them, for example, a reading material, and they have to read that, maybe a three-page, uh, academic paper and you create a quiz out of that academic paper for what 10 points and then you can give access as to a specific time it comes out in the specific duration then I would believe that would cut down on the cheating thing uh, I hope that answers the question all right ma'am we have another question from Ms. Rebecca Palma and the question is i um, been using Edmodo for several years now, and I found it very convenient, as in my case, with one or two preparations and two or three classes only in a semester. Mm -hmm. What about for teachers or professors with maximum preparations and, say, nine classes with 45 students per class in a semester? Will Edmodo work for them, and will having all their classes be loaded in Edmodo possible, considering some factors that will put some of our teachers at present? Thank you so much for a very informative session. Uh, yeah. Mom Rebecca, I know what you feel. <laughs> I have a lot of Edmodo classes right now, especially with this pandemic. It's a lot of individual tasks. I, I think it would boil down to time management in our part. And 
creating tasks that we can also work with easily, creating yeah. chunks. What I do sometimes is uh, to to lessen the, the the weight of the check-in. Um, I would group students in a class face to face. Okay, you're one group. You will be a group of five. Then you post an assignment. So it's going to be a group task. So you'll only be expecting what? Uh, maybe eight submissions. That's fine. So at least you lessen the load a bit. But I would say, I would still recommend, yes, it more than would be helpful with even so many classes you have because everything is in its place in that sense. But yes, it will really take more effort on our part to keep uh, maintaining our records in our, our own personal systems in giving tasks, preparing tasks, and, and grading them. Thank you very much that you found the talk interesting and helpful. All right, now we have a question. So, uh, Dasalia of ISPSC in Ilocos Sur, how will you handle the bulk of files since, par since parents will be included and is their access limited only to their children? Um, to answer that question, uh, I can actually send our organizers a link on how to use the parent, the parent, um, a guide on how to use the parent account as teachers, because uh, honestly, I have not really maximized the parent option. I just find comfort in seeing that parents would log into our class. And when I was reading about this further, I've never attempted to send a message to a parent too, but you can give that option. Actually, if you're going to do a post, you could specify parents of a specific class. They can get that information too. So uh, parents, I think they have a limitation as to how they interact with the class. But again, I'm not 100% sure. So as I said, uh, we will give that link to our organizers. And uh, I hope that you would get that. But on second thought, let me post it in our Edmodo classroom right now, the Writing for Social Media. I will be including that link for, for you to access. Yeah. All right. Thank you, ma'am. We have another question from Ms. Romeline Tutaan Lagura. How much does Edmodo cost per school year? Is it affordable for a school to use it or is it- It's free. Sorry. Sorry, I cut you. Sorry, sir. I was just excited. Uh, it's free, Paul. You can use it. Just, yes, it's 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 a, a hero that way. Uh, I'd like to call uh, Edmodo the Jarvis of uh, Iron Man. <laughs> To a teacher. <laughs> All right. Thank you, ma'am. We have it's another free. question here mm -hmm. from Ms. Carla Carmela Perez. Um, are the questions randomly or do the questions randomly appear in the quiz assigned to the students? Second question, if the students already turned in, uh, to their quiz, can they still edit their answers or can they take the same quiz again? As far as I, uh, based on the experience I had so far, once they turn in, turn in their work, they can't go to back, go back to it anymore. Um, when it comes to random, randomized, uh, us as teachers, we can put in a set of questions, right? But if you say randomize, Edmodo will just mix those questions apart. Uh, sometimes we need that option, especially if we're covering multiple uh, concepts. So if you want to give them a certain level of a challenge, so to speak, uh, there, that's where we can use uh, the randomized option. Yeah, I think it's also good that you mentioned, ma'am, that uh, students cannot be able to go back to the same quiz again for them to really take the quiz seriously and think before they click on the, the next button for them to go to the next item. All right. Uh, Ma'am, we have another question here from Ms. Rostelia Janisha Domingo. She said, um, in a physical education class, how can we use the model classroom online teaching and learning? We should not focus on theoretical aspect, but also the physical aspect of the students. So in terms of physical aspects, how is Edmodo going to answer this, Ma'am? Ah, yes. That's a good, very good question. Um, I would say... Uh, back to our discussion on uh, asynchronous learning. If you would need to, if your class, if you need your class to do a certain thing, um, you could, 
if it's a physical skill as a teacher you could demonstrate it take a video of yourself right for example a dance step like my children we have a they have to finish this this dance and then if you create your assignment post you would require them to submit a video so they can upload an mp4 and that would bridge the gap when it comes to physical tasks that they have to submit they have to perform uh, that would be i think the best scenario how to handle that that when it comes to physical tasks and uh creativity wise uh, that's where our teaching styles come in too uh, you can turn an academic task to a physical task like uh, if you're teaching math for example and it's fractions and um how much or amount All right, uh, I think we have another uh, technical problem uh, when it comes to the internet connection of uh, Mom K. In a way, uh, this is one downside of technology if our uh, internet connection is really not that strong. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it's a challenge that we are all to uh, embrace and uh, look uh, at uh, solutions. All right. So just keep your questions coming because we are uh, sorting them for us to be able to uh, uh, give them to Mom Faith her to answer your questions on the use of Edmodo. All right. Let's try to check if Miss uh, K is already with us again. On K. All right. Um, I think while we are waiting for Mom K, can I uh, just uh, make another announcement? Actually, it was the same announcement that we had this morning on uh, your way. Uh, no, okay, Mom K is with us already. Okay, you're, you're back. Yeah, it's raining now. Sorry, yes. I'm in Wi-Fi now. So, okay, more stable. Right. stable. Uh, no, no worries. Mm -hmm. So, may, may I go back to our question? Mm -hmm. All right, Mom from uh, Sir Robin uh, Fetalvo. Is there a provision on Edmodo for principals or deans to observe teachers' mm -hmm. class? Oh, um, if I would understand this, is there uh, maybe, sir, you could also help me out here. Would I understand the question for as like, is like admin deans can they also monitor, so to speak, the tax of Edmodo? In a way, how can, is there a possibility for principals and deans or even coordinators to check on uh, how teachers are doing using uh, Edmodo? Uh, yes, I came across so one as one feature of Edmodo where it can be used by it can be used by admin administrative. Um, but let me make sure I'll look into that and then once I get information, I'll, I'll send it to our organizers for for added information, or I can also post it in our the class that we created today. But yes, there was some some aspect of Edmodo that allows admin administrative uh, officials in this, the academy to to access something like that. But let me look into it more. All right, thank you, Miss K. I think we have another question uh, from Lizelle Tojos. Is there a limit of the number of students? Uh, so far, I've only gone up to fifty. So um, in that sense, just because the class, the number of students in a class would be a maximum of 50. But in one class, I haven't really tested that yet. Yeah, but um, let me look that up briefly right now. So far, I've only gone up to 60 maybe, 50 to 60. Okay, ma'am, uh, yes. from Ms. Maiden Guevara, during the quiz using Edmodo, which is under time limit, what if there is a power interruption? Can the student take the exam again or, you know? Uh -huh. You know what? That's a, that's, a real, uh, that's a real question. This is where we communicate with our students because if we are aware of a problem like that, then we could set up the quiz again for them. Um, the, the students would really need to tell us their situation. 
and we as teachers can adjust, so to speak. Um, but since they maybe have experience answering the first half maybe and the power got off, then we have no choice but to create a new the questions just to you know, be sure that we we get what we need from them and that's their understanding and there yeah, so all right that i hope that answers the question okay so we have our next question from uh, mr gerald de peralta since i have a penchant of using reaction pics to react to, i use pictures to to react on edmodo uh, yeah, let me show you something because you asked that. I also like uh, reacting, but I keep it to a minimum. Um, sometimes we can overuse emoticons. But right now in Edmodo, you can actually, in a quiz, I, relate, I recently discovered that a quiz option can now be a picture file. It's actually great. If you, uh, like here, for example, messages. Uh, if I were to send a message to anyone, it has, Edmodo has its own sets of emoticons you can use. And when you're talking about um, reacting in a, in the stream itself, in the, in the communication stream, your reactions can be liking. It's, 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 uh, it's limited to likes. Because uh, the messaging, the messaging option, sorry, has I think um, four or five options for emoticons. But uh, to answer your question directly, I would say it's all right to use reactions and emoticons. But I'm sure we will be able to know when we're going overboard with that. Yes. From Peter Simon Mones, I have my own account or student account that is. My question is, can I change or switch my student account to teacher account? Or is there any option in the settings since the uh, audience uh -huh. is a teacher already? I experienced that same thing. It was, uh, I had difficulty because I was a, a student at grad school, then I started teaching. So I had to go to my settings, take change the primary email address with another one and that would fix the problem so it's just changing the then you can start you can log in as a teacher already and i think edmodo has has an answer to that too i can share those links in our what we call this i'm taking down these questions we'll post it in the classroom we set up all right, thank you. So it's possible to do a switch account. It's possible, sir. yes. Okay, we have a next question um, from Sir Arthur Peter James. What about subjects that require the student to perform operation of uh, or simulator equipment, like in maritime education? How can this be handled by Edmodo? I think, Mom um, Kate, this also goes to other subjects like um, TLE subjects or um, courses which require. Um, simulation or hands-on manipulation of gadgets can edmodo address this concern uh tactile wise that would be very difficult um difficult because maybe if you're talking about uh skills where you have to hold something and you as a teacher should monitor how they do it the closest you could get to that is a video of them actually doing it watching them do it but I have truly really have the same question when it comes to skills like this. Um, there was one resource that I think it boils down to getting the right material available on the web and then collating that into one assignment post so students can access that and find out how to do it right. And if they have the equipment with them, then that could be a possibility. So what I'm trying to say is, Edmodo can help as far as two things. One, they could do a demonstration. The other is if it's a complex task, then as teachers, then I'm sure we'll know how, how what, what are we after? What do we want to see our students fulfill? And if it's possible to do it, like for example, in, in that uh, content that you were talking about, sir, maybe we could find um, resources 
outside third party sources then collate these as links and attachments. And this could help students hopefully um, improve on their skills because YouTube does it all the time too, right? Uh, they have all sorts of, of things you can learn from sewing and knitting. I'm talking about simple things, but I understand the complex, the complexities of other, um, what do you call this, courses and subjects. Yes, I hope that helps. All right, thank you, ma'am. We have a question here from Region 6 from Iloilo City. Uh, good PM, ma'am. Uh, I understand that there are three accounts that can be created in this platform. This is from Ma'am Lorna Pulmones. Under the parent account, can the parent intervene or get involved using Edmodo platform? Thank you so much. Uh, as I mentioned, it, it's a limited interaction. Um, it's more of someone like, Oh, okay, these are the tasks of my, my child. And if you have a question, it will go, you can send, a, a, a send. I think. That's why I said I'm not sure. But it's a limited access. It's really more on monitoring. I think uh, we have another question from uh, Ms. Nesle Huko. Can you monitor student logs, particularly the amount of time the student log? in your subject in Edmodo or log management tool? Sir, Sir Huko, that's a very good question because I ask that myself too. Uh, unfortunately, I think, I would like to believe Edmodo will be working on that because uh, Microsoft has that, uh, how long they spend on, like what do you call this, analytics, we call those analytics. But for Edmodo, at the moment mm -hmm. I have, not, not yet. It's really more on progress, uh, turning in work if they submitted it, not yet, if they've heard about the class at all, and things like that. But that would be a very good feature for any tool because I would also want to have that analytics because it's very interesting. All right. Um, can we have one last question, but I believe other questions could be sent uh, in the link uh, or uh, class you have uh, created a while ago. This is from Madeline Tinko, and uh, the question is, as teachers, how can we ensure that a so-called human touch in the teaching and learning process is still present in a virtual classroom or learning environment? And she says, thank you very much. I'm so glad you asked that question, Madeline. Um, when we say human touch in teaching and learning, it takes two things. One, you have a perfect understanding of who you are as a teacher, your strengths, your abilities. Then you can work around activities that you yourself, we ourselves are comfortable at using in the classroom. Because of course, if we're not interested in the tasks we're giving, that will be felt by our students. It will be all for compliance, so to speak. And the other aspect when it comes to the human touch in learning, I think is that we also at least uh, have a sense of who our students are, uh, what are their routines like, what do they like to do, uh, what's the latest funny meme, um, what matters to them. Uh, we, we, it's good to know the students we're teaching, although not fully, but at least be able to understand what their inclinations are. Uh, their talents, what they're into, then we can craft. If those two things meet, you as yourself, um, what do you call this? You have a perfect, like for example, the tasks we worked on today, like feature writing, I love writing. So feature writing could be elevated to a vlog and the kids now, they like vlogs. So you can pick that and so to speak, uh, marry that or fuse that together and that would be personal touch. That and um, last, talking to them, actually asking them how they're, so how's your vlog, right? You could set up a poll. Are you done with your vlog? 50%, 70%, I don't know what I'm doing, 5%. That's fine, as long as you get feedback. All right, thank you very much, um, MK. Uh, I think we have one last question here from Ms. Uh, Alma Iko. Uh, and anyway, uh, this is not a question, but uh, an affirmation. Thank you very much uh, because uh, we can hear the thunder. Yes. 
So crazy. Uh, we, Bag your weather. About uh, your situation there during this mm-hmm. time. Nonetheless, um, um, Alma Iko would like to uh, extend uh, her gratitude to Chad Region 1 and to you, Ma'am uh, Kay, from uh, Baguio City for uh, answering the call to service through this uh, endeavor of our uh, office. I'm also very thankful for the opportunity, Paul. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm Kay on behalf of uh, Chad Regional Office 1 and our audience from the Philippines and even from... Uh, some uh, foreign countries uh, who are watching us via Facebook Live and the YouTube channel of Ched Regional Office One. Thank you so much, Agyaman Kami Unai. Uh, God bless you in all, in all your endeavors and please extend our warm regards to the SLU community led by Father Gilbert Sales, CICM. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, it has been such an honor and a privilege. I think I think uh, Ched Region One and pro colleagues who have invited me, and I hope that we keep learning like this together because we need this more than ever. And uh, uh, from in behalf of SLU, we stand as one as an academe to do our best to make re- learning relevant in whatever way possible. And so thank you very much for for listening in and bearing with the thunder and the power outage and the like. But uh, I wish everyone blessings in their classroom and in their teaching. And uh, thank you very much for this. I really am very grateful. Thank you once again, Ms. K. And uh, we hope to see you in person after this uh, pandemic. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Thank you so much, dear friends. And now for words of gratitude. Let us welcome our OIC Chief Education Program Specialist, Mr. Danilo B. Bose. Sir? Thank you, JP. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ka-webinars. Uh, you have just witnessed another interesting and relevant topics in this session. I believe this is the fifth session, right? Yes. And this is only proof that uh, learning continues even with the time of pandemic. Okay? We are receiving... Uh, positive feedbacks from our participants and viewers. Those feedbacks inspire us more to provide uh, different avenues uh, with the end goal of improving your teaching skills through online, offline, blended, flexible learning, and other platforms. We leave it to you what mode that best fit your students and learners. I believe that the opening of classes get as the opening of classes get closer. We are getting more confident that we can easily adapt our teaching strategies for the new classroom normal. And of course, because of this very interesting and relevant topics, I would like to thank our dear resource speakers who have shared their expertise and talents and skills for the different sessions in this series of webinars. Thank you so much, our dear resource speakers. Thank you, 100 Paul. And of course, I would also like to thank our ever lawyer participants. You are very, you are the very reason why we are here today. All this women webinar series are intended for all of you. And of course, to all the men and women of Chet Regional Office One who are right now at the back of this camera, the the, the, the uh, Chad Region 1 team, thank you so much for all these innovations and initiatives. And of course, uh, to, to, to all the, again, please continue to, to uh, uh, participate in the upcoming webinar series. There are a lot of, of uh, informations and strategies at store for you, and we are doing this for all of you guys. With that, uh, to all of you, God bless us all. Thank you. Continue to be safe. And again, from the bottom of our hearts, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. God bless. Thank you very much, Sir Danny, our OIC Chief Education Program Specialist here. At the Regional Office One, City of San Fernando, La Union. All right. Um, you heard Sir Danny, and uh, we encourage you still to uh, be a part of our next 
webinar series. Please, um, again, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Ched Regional Office One. And please like our Facebook page, that's Ched Region 1, for you to be able to be updated with our incoming webinar series, with other topics which are really relevant to our education people and to our stakeholders as well. Um, we will be um, having uh, as our next topic, Scology Codicom Testmos. This will be uh, next week. So you have to subscribe and like to uh, like our accounts facebook and youtube for to be able to see the links and before we uh, end again i would like to uh, give you an assignment children we have been discussing since the whole day as your assignment we will check your assignment of course you have to uh, wait for the link so that you can get your e-certificates these are our new guidelines and this will be used in the succeeding webinars that we will be together. How to get an e-certificate. The first step that you need to do is, of course, attend our sessions both in the morning and in the afternoon. You are here. Thank you. Secondly, um, we'll be posting the feedback form and quiz link after I speak. H having seen the link, the next thing that you are to do is to fill out the feedback form and take the quiz starting a few minutes from now until 6 o'clock tonight. Until 6 o'clock only. And I reiterate our constant reminder. Please answer religiously, correctly, and seriously following the instructions that you can see in the online evaluation form. You are to answer six questions. Those who received a passing mark of four out of six questions for the quiz shall receive their e-certificates. We have been receiving also questions on how do we get our previous certificates. We've attended the previous seminars. This is the answer to your question. Download your certificates at webinar.chadro1.com. I repeat, that's webinar.chadro1.com. And... Of course, as I have said this morning, our certificates are officially recognized by the DICT. So that means that you have to really seriously take this uh, as an advice, answer them properly. Because we implemented the Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure of the ICT, because we would like to secure the authenticity of your e-certificates. Again, there are two features. The digital signature of our OIC director is recognized by the DICT. And secondly, every e-certificate has its own unique control number to avoid duplication, alteration, and unlawful publication or re reproduction of such document. And of course, on Thursday, uh, we will again meet and the topic would be module writing. This is important for those who would like to have flexible learning in their HEIs. Let's talk about gender issues during COVID-19. And of course, we have to discuss nutritional health in the challenging times. So these are very important topics which we believe you are all interested to in uh, attending. So that's on Thursday. Again, Tuesday, Scology, Codicom Tesmos. Thursday will be module writing, gender issues during COVID-19, and nutritional health in the challenging times. All right. Now you can see the link here. There. <laughs> Here, it's bit.ly slash ched session 5. Class, this is the link you are to click for you to be able to evaluate our session and receive your e-certificates. Again, that's bit.ly slash ched session 5. So, dear friends, on behalf of my colleagues here at our Chedro One studio, in our newsroom, I have here with me Ma'am Lynette, Sir Elvin, and uh, Sir Mel. We would like to say daghang salamat 
Muchas gracias a todos. Gracias mille. Agyaman kami unay balbalaga. Salamat. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you again next Tuesday. This is JP Live from CHED R01, City of San Fernando, La Union. Happy 26th anniversary, Commission on Higher Education.
Thank you. 